Welcome back to my dark room. We are still currently in coronavirus lockdown, so we're going to look at how Selectall D52 print developer looks different than Dectall. When I'm printing for exhibitions, I'll normally use a formula I mix up using Amidol. We'll look at that formula a different time, but here I'm going to use Dectol. I use it a lot for hmm, test prints, just experiments on different things, uh, because it's a good standard developer. It's nice neutral tone, good contrast, full development, and there's not a whole lot to complain about. Now this new stuff that just has come from Kodak, it is mixing a brown instead of clear or mostly clear. Uh, a lot of people have been concerned about that, myself included. Kodak did just co uh, put out a statement saying that one of the non-reactive chemicals has a, uh, a tainted quality to it, and that's causing the brown. They are currently looking for a solution, and I hope that future mixes of Dectol will be just fine. That aside, what I've decided to do today and in uh, future videos is look at making the same print using different developers and just compare them to Dectol because Dectol is a nice neutral developer formula. Now, being in coronavirus lockdown, I am currently uh, using formulas I can just mix up from raw materials because uh, I can't go to my local store and get things like Ilford multigrade print developer, stuff like that. We'll get to that uh, once things open back up. So what I decided to start with was Kodak's D52 formula, which they used to prepackage under the name Selectol. It was discontinued shortly before I started to get into darkroom work. Uh, I started in 1998. It was already gone by that time. Uh, but we're gonna look and see how that's different. We're gonna use two different papers just to um, to kind of see if there's a difference between a neutral tone and a warm tone. Uh, and we'll just see what's there. And then if you're thinking about helping support this channel, you can get a lab towel if you're in the market for one that is down in the link in the description or t-shirts that are also down in the description. So let's look at how these developers differ and how they affect the final print. For select all D52, start with one and a half grams of metal, 22 and a half grams of sodium sulfite, six grams hydroquinone, 17 grams sodium carbonate monohydrate, and one and a half grams potassium bromide. Mix all this with one liter of water and then dilute one part stock to one part water. Okay, here is the print with Dectol. Let me get it centered up. All right, so good contrast, good density. It took, you know, a few test strips as normal, which I'm not going to bore you with watching, but ultimately we get to this part. So this is Ilford Classic. It is neutral in tone. It's full scale. This is printed with a one and a half filter, so half a filter down, but that's more due to the uh, negative development. <clears throat> and there you go. So let's now look at the Selectol version of this. So here is Selectol. Now, like Dectol, this uses metal and hydroquinone for developing agents. And there is no difference whatsoever. I have scrutinized over this print for quite a while trying to find any difference at all. None. I've got the same contrast. I have the same density. Um, I have the same color. So no difference between Selectol and Dectol with Ilford Classic. Let's take a look at warm tone. So first, let's look at warm tone in Dectol next to classic in Dectol. Ooh, 
So we can already see, um, so I'm gonna check my monitor as we do this to make sure you see what I see in person. <clears throat> uh, it is just a little bit lower in contrast. I would say most noticeable here compared to here. This is still a one and a half filter. Um, but the color warm as it's supposed to be. The base of the paper is not much different. It's a pretty neutral white paper, but the emulsion itself does come out warmer and a little bit more green. <clears throat> Classic's very neutral. This a warm and green. Okay, and this is our warm tone select all print. And I feel like this is even warmer. So it did increase the warmth of the print. I would say the contrast is slightly lower. And the reason why I'm saying that is it seems to be a little, well, no, maybe not. I wanted to say it was a little lower in contrast here, but quite frankly, where I'm looking at now, no, eh, maybe a touch. I can maybe see it here, but everything else seems to be about the same. This shadow seems a little darker than that one, but oh, just the slightest bit. Quite frankly, I probably would notice if I didn't have them next to each other, scrutinizing them as I am right now. But the color I can see is definitely a touch warmer here than here. Not an incredible amount, but if I wanted to ramp the, uh, the warmth up just a little bit, Select All would probably do that for me. And of course the contrast I could make up for in filtration. All right, here is Select All in the Classic next to Select All in the Warm Tone. And it's basically the same as looking at the Deck Tall in the two. Neutral, warm. So there you have it. And there you go. That pretty much sums it up. When I use uh, Ilford Classic fiber paper, I have no difference between the two. They are giving me the exact same density, the exact same contrast, the exact same color. Most of that is due to the paper. I find extremely little variation when using different things with the Ilford Classic paper. Now the Ilford Warm Tone, that's a whole different uh, ball game. And that's because it has more of a chlorobromide emulsion instead of just a bromide emulsion. That chlorobromide, and with chloride papers like um, Kodak Azo, which is no longer made, uh, Adox Lupex, and Lodema papers, those contact printing chloride papers, they show an even greater difference, but they're hard to come by. So maybe one day we'll look at uh, the effects of those, but right now I'm going to stick to just the Ilford Classic and Warm Tone because I've got some of that and they're, they're pretty fully saturated into the market. But the Warm Tone paper, oh, we definitely saw a difference there, didn't we? We saw that it was warmer in color. It was also slightly lower in contrast, even though the densities of our highlights were about the same. Now, that is more due to the paper itself being slightly lower in contrast. I find even in the Dectal, it's a little bit lower in contrast than the Classic. That's just the paper itself. But here, the Selectol also made it slightly lower than the Dectal. So an interesting result. I wasn't anticipating that, but there it is. So if you're looking to make a developer and you want a little bit warmer tone, Selectol's not going to do it for you if you're using a bromide heavy paper like Ilford Classic. But if you're using warm tone papers, Selectol may be exactly what you're looking for. A little bit of warmth and pretty much the same contrast as general purpose developers. So hope that helps. Next time we'll try something different. Until then, please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you then.